Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really awesome loopable animation in Blender 2.83. So what it is, it's a hydraulic press. It comes down and squishes this ball and then it comes up again and it just repeats. It's, it's loopable. And it's really satisfying to look at. I am going to be making this scene file available for a dollar on Gumroad in the description below if anybody wants to check that out. I do recommend to do this tutorial. You have at least a basic understanding of Blender and its various functions. I wouldn't recommend this tutorial for an absolute beginner. So before wasting any more time, let's get into it. I hope you guys really like it. Okay, so if a brand new scene opened up in Blender 2.8 free, go ahead, delete everything in the scene. And then we're going to go Shift A. We go to our mesh options and add in a cylinder. So go here to mesh options, add in a cylinder. Then we're going to go here to our edit mode. For all of these vertices selected, go S, Z, and just bring them down. Um, you can make this as thick as you want. I'm going to go with something like this. It doesn't have to be exact. Then going Shift Alt, we're going to click here to loop select these. And then go E, S to bring them into here. And then E, Z, and take them up to about here for now. Simple like that. And then what we can do is go G, Z, and just bring this guy to about here, like that. And then if we tab into edit mode again, and we just go um, Shift Alt and select this loop here by clicking on it, and then go Shift D, Z, we can bring this guy down to the floor. And once again, this doesn't have to be exact. Um, okay, so I've accidentally selected vertices there, but don't worry about that at the moment. Then I'm going to go E, Z, and just extrude that face up to make the bottom of our press here. And this is where this plate here is going to meet the surface. So I'm going to just go G, Z, bring it up to about here, make it roughly the same thickness as this head here. Okay, so I'm just going to delete these extra vertices I accidentally made. Not a big deal. And we could, if you wanted to, you could leave it just like this and do the animation and start getting into stuff. But to make it look a little bit nicer, what I'm going to do is just um, shift alt, select this face here, and then go E, S to extrude it in a little bit. Then E, bring it up, and then E, S to extrude it in again. And then just E to bring it down to about here. And then this S to scale it in a little bit. Just to give it some, uh, make it a little bit more aesthetic. And then I'm going to just do um, the same thing here. So in this case, I'm going to go Control R to add in another loop. Double click, and then if you hit double G, G twice, you can slide this. So I'm going to slide it to about here. Come here to my face select, and if I go shift alt and I click here I can loop select these faces and I'm going to go E Z and just bring them up and the only reason I'm doing this it's not there's no functionality to it it's just simply to make it a bit more aesthetic uh, and it makes it look nice so just something like that works fine and then what we can do is come over here to our modifiers and instead of adding a subdivision surface we're going to come here to our beveling options and if you come over here to the limited the limit method we make it angle we can now come over here to our um, our offset, and if you mess around with the slider, you can you can um, and you hold in control. Okay, we're just going to slide it to something like that, about 0 0.02, and then you can come over here to your segments and just increase the segments. I'm going to do to about three. Then go to my object and just enable smooth shading. And if you did want to, you could probably come in here and add a subdivision surface on top of it, and I might actually do that now that I think about it. And this is what we have. It's looking pretty good. So we can now go Shift A, add in a mesh here. We're going to add in a plane. We're just going to scale it up. It can be any size for now. We'll mess around with it later. Okay, and then we're going to go Shift A. We're going to go to our mesh options and just add in a UV sphere. Go G, Z, bring it up to about here, and just scale it down a bit as well. So just something like this. Doesn't have to be exactly like I'm doing it, just like this. Then go to your modifiers, add a subdivision surface, and also just enable smooth shading. And here's our scene. So we can now just go into our front view and come here roughly about 45 degrees. And you go Shift A, and we're going to add in a camera. And your camera should be now selected. So then hit zero on your number pad to go to camera view. Then hit the G key, and then your middle mouse wheel, hold it and pull back on your mouse, and you can zoom out. And now you can just hit G in your 3D space to adjust your camera here. And I'm going to go here to my camera settings. I like making my um, motion graphic stuff orthographic, so I'm going to select orthographic. And come here to my um, this little tab here, the little printer icon. And I'm going to make this 1080 at the top, so 1080. So we now have a 1080 by 1080 um, dimension here. 
Go back to the camera and now if you pull this scale slider you can zoom in and out. So I'm going to go with something like this and just go G and move it here. Okay, so that is our scene for now. So we've got our hydraulic press here. Um, one thing we can we have to do as well, it's very important, is just come over, tab into edit mode here. Just select any one of these faces in this top part, go control L to select all of them, and then P and just separate selection. So now what we have is two separate pieces. That's what we want. And we can pretty much now start getting into our animation where we make this come down and press. And then we can also come in after that and add a, um, a shape key to this to make it deform. Okay, so the animation on this is pretty straightforward. Let's get into our front view here quickly. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just grab this guy here. I'm gonna go Control A, and just apply the scale and apply the rotation just to make sure it doesn't mess anything up. And then we're gonna go into frame one. So make sure you're on frame one. And while you're in frame one and you have this guy selected, go I and insert a location frame. Then we're gonna drag this slider to 15 and I, and we're gonna insert a location frame. So what we're gonna have here now is a hold and then at um, frame 15, it's gonna start moving down. So we wanna to go to frame 100. And at frame 100, we're gonna go G, Z, and bring this guy down to about here. Well, actually, maybe a little bit higher, like that. And then we're gonna go I, and we're gonna insert a location key as well. Then what we're gonna do is click on this location key here, go Shift D, and drag it to frame 115. So we're gonna have a bit of a hold here, and I'm gonna drag this slider to the middle and in this middle, I'm gonna go G, Z, bring it down a little bit and go I and insert a location. So what's gonna happen, not only is it gonna to come to a stop here and have a hold, but it's also gonna be a little bit of play in the middle of that. So it's not just coming to a dead solid stop, it's just kind of moving as it comes to a stop. So if you play it, you should see something like that. It just makes it look a little bit more realistic. When we're done with that, drag your slider to frame 180. And then we want it to go back to where it originally was. And an easy way to do that is just to click on this first keyframe we did and then go shift D and just slide it over to frame 180. So now what's going to happen, it's going to go back up to where it was. And we can make this animation easily loopable now because they end and stop at the exact same place. So let's just make the frames here 200 and hit enter. So we're going to have this. It's going to start with a bit of a hold. It's going to play through, press down on a ball. It stops for a bit and then comes back up where it was and then this, the animation just repeats itself. And if you want this to look a little bit, um, to stop a little bit longer, what we can do is just um, select these three here in the middle and just drag the slider and if you scale them, you can make it um, the hold a bit longer. So make this however you want. So I'm just gonna go with that. So it comes down, it stops for a bit and then goes up again. So yeah, you can just, you know, you can even move them around, it's totally up to you, but let's just, go with something like that. Works fine for me. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can come in and start to deform this ball over here and animate it. Okay, so doing the animation on the ball is pretty straightforward. What we're gonna do is select this ball here, and then we're gonna go to frame one over here, and we're gonna go to our um, object data properties here, click on that tab, and we're gonna go to our shape keys, and with this guy selected, we're gonna hit the plus, that's gonna add in a basis, and then we're gonna hit the plus again and that's gonna add in our first key. And with this guy selected, key one, what we're gonna do is tab into edit mode and we're gonna come here and scale this guy down a bit. So we're gonna enable our proportional editing, go to your vertex select mode and select the top vertice here. Then go G, Z and bring that down. And if you wanna increase or decrease the proportional fall off, you can just scroll your middle mouse wheel. So I'm just gonna go with something like that for now. Then go to my wireframe just so I can see what I'm doing. Grab this vertice down here and just bring it up to here. And I'm just creating what looks like kind of like a hamburger patty at the moment. And then I can select all of them by pressing A and then S, Z. And then just scale it up as well. Because we want that displacement. And I'm going to go G, Z, bring it down. And this doesn't have to be exact at all. As long as it just kind of looks roughly like what I'm doing. Um, essentially, we want to make it look like it's being squished down and, and displacing. It's pretty easy to do. So let's quickly tab out. And just so we can see what we're doing, we're gonna drag the slider to frame 100 where it touches down fully. And now we'll select that ball again, and just tab into edit mode. And now we can kind of grab these and scale them and just make sure it all works. So maybe down a bit more. Okay, that works. So if you look at that, it's 
um, it's not going through that mesh at the top and it's not going through the mesh in the bottom. And you can also just scale these a bit, bring them up, just make it look like it's getting kind of extruded out. Um, so it doesn't have to be exactly like I'm doing it, just roughly like this. So now if you um, come over here and you tab out of edit mode and you grab this value slider, it's gonna go all the way like we made it. And we're gonna animate this value slider here along with our hydraulic press animation to make it look like it's getting squished. So let's start by going to our first frame and go to our front view, um, it just makes things easier. And we're gonna just work our way through this animation. So I'm gonna drag the slider and at about this point here, that's where, we wanna, where it touches, that's where we wanna start um, putting in our keyframe. So our first keyframe, we're gonna make at about 34 or wherever it starts to make um, contact with the ball. It might be different on your setup. So on mine, that's at about 34. So with that done, with a value of zero here on my key one, I'm gonna hit I, hovering over here to insert a keyframe. So on frame 34, it has a value of zero. And then I'm gonna keep working through here and I'm gonna drag it all the way to 100. And at frame 100, I wanna drag this value all the way to one and hit I while I'm hovering over it. So now it's gonna kind of play out along with my animation. And then we wanna drag this and keep dragging it till this guy starts coming up. So at about 120, I'm gonna just add a value of one still, I'm just gonna hit I. Okay, and then I'm gonna drag this and keep dragging it to 180 where it comes back. And at this point, I'm gonna just drag it to zero again and hit I. So now what we're gonna have, if we play through this, we're gonna see this. So it comes down, our ball gets squished, it has a bit of a hold, and it also comes up like that. And then it's just gonna keep repeating. So that was pretty much our animation. It wasn't that hard at all. Now we can get into the really fun part, the, uh, all the stressful stuff out of the way. Now we can do our lighting and just make our scene look totally awesome. So that's what we're gonna be doing right now. Okay, so the materials are pretty straightforward. First of all, just go into your um, render settings here. Make sure we're set to EV. You can make it cycles if you want. I'm gonna enable ambient occlusion and also screen space reflections. Then I'm gonna go Shift A, go to my lights. We're gonna add in area light. Go G, Z, bring the light up to about here. Go to your camera settings and we're gonna increase the size to something like that, it's about seven meters. And then I'm gonna make the power here 500 and hit enter. And then I'm gonna go Shift D, duplicate it and I'm gonna rotate it here just to add in a light coming from the side and then Shift D, rotate it over here just to create a simple three point light setup. So if I go to my camera settings, I mean go into my camera view and I go rendered, we can now see this is our lighting, nothing too fancy. You could use a HDRI if you wanna make it look even better, but I'm just gonna do this for the tutorial. You can also grab your camera if you want and with your camera selected, double tap R if you wanna kind of rotate your camera in the scene or readjust it. I might just change mine a little bit till I find something I like. Okay, so I like this pose. Make it whatever you want. You can make it non-orthographic as well if you want. I'm just doing this for the tutorial. Now we can get into our shading, which is the fun part. So click on the shading, go into your camera here, go to Z and go to rendered. And let's start by making the material for the ball. So I'm gonna select the ball here, go new. You can call it ball. And then we can just make the color whatever we want. I like a nice kind of green, lime green kind of color for my ball. And if you come here to the subsurf, you can increase that and that's gonna give it some translucency, which I think really helps with any kind of rubbery, squishy material. And you can give it a subsurf color. I'm gonna go with something that's slightly yellowish green, like that. You can drag, drag this value up as much as you want. I'm just gonna leave it at this, just a nice basic translucent material. Make the color whatever you want. Then I grab this hydraulic press here and go new. And all we're gonna do is here on our principal shader, just drag the metallic value all the way up to one and bring this roughness down a bit. And then I'm gonna grab this guy in the bottom and just give it that same metal material. We can also just name it metal, just so we're nice and organized. And now I'll grab this plane here, go new, and we're gonna quite simply just add a nice orangey color to this. Now, this is kind of like a complementary color scheme that I like. I like nice soft oranges and greens. So this is what I went with, but you guys can like go crazy, go to Adobe color palettes, you know, make this whatever you want, add some fancy metal textures here. But this is just what I'm gonna go with for the tutorial. I might make this a little bit more saturated. That looks really awesome. 
Now, what we can do to render this out, let's just go back to our layout here. And we have this set to 200 frames, that's all correct. We already know that our animation works. So if we just go in here to our material preview, we already know our, anima our animation works, everything looks fine. Let's just have a look at it one more time. Okay, that's fantastic. So let's get into our rendering. So let's just go here to our um, output properties. And to render this out, simply go to your output here, click on a little file, go to your desktop, wherever you want to save the video, go accept. And you want to go here to the file format, go and change this from um, PNG to FFmpeg. You want to go to your encoding and you want to make the container an MP4. And you want to come here to the output quality and a good thing to do is just set it to perceptually lossless. And now if you go to render and you render the animation, it's going to render it out to wherever you saved it. Also, one quick tip, if you want a bit better quality, you can also come here to the render samples and you can make it something like 120. I find it works quite well for Eevee. Um, if you get a lot of noise still, you can make it more. It also depends on your machine. It could slow things down a bit. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to go render. I'm going to render this animation. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when we come back. And here you have it, guys. This is the final animation. This is what it looks like. I hope you guys have found this useful. I hope it's been educational. Um, if you want to support this channel, please subscribe. It helps me a lot. I really do appreciate it. And like I said in the beginning, this file is available on Gumroad for a dollar. If anybody wants to get that and check it out, it also helps support the channel and that is greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial and thank you for watching.